Hello, calculus friends. Uh, we are going to do a quick lesson. I don't know how quick because I haven't done this lesson before in a video. So we're going to say maybe 15, 20 minutes um, on Taylor's theorem with remainder. So in your packets, I need you to find the lesson on Taylor with remainder and Lagrange error bound. Uh, I believe in your packets, it's page 23. Um, but take a second and find this in your packet. And away we go. So one of the things that we've been doing when we do these Taylor series is we've said find the first four non-zero terms and then we stop. And I've said it's important to stop where we tell you to stop because a lot of these Taylor series are done with not all of the terms because a Taylor series has an infinite number of terms. So we obviously have to stop. Well, the next question would be then, if we stop, how much accuracy are we losing? If I try to evaluate the sine function using only out to the x to the seventh term, how much am I going to be off by when I use that series to estimate the sine of pi over 4? So those are the kind of questions that need answering. And so what we want to do is we want to use this like remainder theorem idea, which says, how much are we off by? So Taylor's theorem with remainder is this big box right here. And I'm going to do one of those things where I explain the theorem and then I try to boil it down for you. So this says, assume f has derivatives of all orders in an open interval i containing a. All right, what the heck does that mean? Well, that just means I have an interval that contains the center. So this a right here is the center. Are you centered around x equals 0 like a Maclaurin, or are you centered around x equals 2? All right, so you have an open interval that contains a center. And then for each positive integer n, for each x and i, f of x, being the function you're trying to mimic, is mimicked by this Taylor series here, stopping at n terms, and then plus whatever you need as a remainder to basically pull that last piece of the function up so that it matches the function you're trying to mimic, okay? Now, that remainder, that amount that you're off by, is given by this crazy looking formula right here, okay? What the heck does that mean? I want you to write this over here. The remainder, when using n terms, I shouldn't even say n terms, it's the remainder when using x to the n as a stop point, okay, is some maximum, sorry, my computer freaked out there, um, some maximum value of the n plus one derivative divided by n plus one factorial x minus a to the n plus one. Okay. Now, what the heck does that mean? It means that technically my remainder can be found by using the next term in the series. If I end it at the term for x to the n, I'm going to look at the x to the n plus one term. And then what I'm going to do is maximize the derivative. So technically, my remainder is less than or equal to this value. Now, this doesn't really mean anything until I do an example. So just kind of follow me for a second, and I will show you how this works. Let f be a function with five derivatives on the interval from 2 to 3, and assume that the fifth derivative of x is less than or equal to 0.2 for all x on the interval from 2 to 3. If a fourth degree Taylor of f centered at x equals 2 is used to estimate f of 3, how accurate is this approximation? The error in using the fourth degree is going to be less than or equal to 
some maximum value of the fifth derivative, and let's see, we're centered at 2, divided by 5 factorial x minus 2 to the fifth. So if you really look at this thing that I wrote on the right, all I did was say, if I use a fourth degree Taylor to estimate something, I look at the fifth degree term that would come next. And I'm going to slightly modify that fifth degree term. And instead of putting the fifth derivative on top, I'm going to maximize what the fifth derivative could possibly be. Now, given everything that we have here, I now know that our error, I forgot an R, our error is going to be less than or equal to the maximum derivative, 0.2, over 5 factorial, 3 minus 2 to the 5th. And if you're thinking, Miss Fibber, where'd you get that 3? That x value is, what are you trying to estimate? So our error is less than or equal to 0.2 divided by 5 factorial, 3 minus 2 to the 5th is 1. That's how much you'd be off by. All right. I'm just going to keep through, keep going through and doing example after example after example, hoping that maybe the more examples, examples you see, the easier this will be. All right. The function f has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers. Values of f and its first four derivatives are given in the table. Cool. Write an equation of the tangent line to f at x equals 3 and use it to approximate f of 2.5. Oh, I can do this. Remember, a tangent line, if I'm already in this, you know, uh, sequences and series mode, is really just the first degree Taylor. So my tangent line would be y equals 6 plus negative 10 over 1 factorial x minus 3 to the first. And there's a whole bunch of other ways to do that, but... Since we're in series mode, I'm going to do it that way. So I really have y equals 6 minus 10 times x minus 3. And if I'm approximating f of 2.5, I'm going to plug 2.5 in for x. So that's going to be 6 minus 10 times negative 0.5, which is, I believe, 11. All right. Fine. Then it's going to come down here and say the fourth derivative of f satisfies the condition that it maxes out at 48 for x greater than or equal to 2. Use the Lagrange error bound. That's the thing we're doing. It's called Taylor's remainder theorem in the Lagrange error bound to show that the approximation found in part b differs from f of 2.5 by no more than 1 eighth. And right now I'm realizing that Mrs. Bibber made a mistake and I obviously need to change something here. So what I am realizing is that we don't have a part B. So we are just going to change this up a little bit and say, da, 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 da. show that the approximation found using a third degree Taylor, there we go, differs from f of 2.5 by no more than 1 eighth. I think I just deleted part b to make this shorter, and then I realized, uh oh, I need that. Okay, so just change that real quick. So this just says, show that a third degree Taylor is going to be off by no more than 1 eighth. So my error using a third degree Taylor is less than or equal to the maximum value of the fourth degree derivative divided by 4 factorial x minus my center, which is uh, 3. What's my center? Oh, yeah, my center is 3 to the fourth. So my error I'm going to call it e sub 3. My error using the third degree term is less than or equal to the maximum value of the fourth derivative, 48, over 4 factorial. 
and I'm trying to estimate f of 2.5, so I'm going to put 2.5 minus 3 to the fourth right here. And let's see, this piece over here is going to be 48 over 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that's 24. And this is going to be 1 half, technically negative 1 half, to the fourth. So that's 2 times 1 16th, which is 1 eighth. So our error in using the third degree polynomial is no more than an eighth. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you ever are asked, what is the error for? Use Taylor's remainder theorem for, use Lagrange error bound to find an error or to prove that an error is a certain amount. You just look at the next term in the series, you max out the next derivative, and they usually tell you how to do that. And then for x, you plug in the number you're trying to estimate. Okay? Let's do a little bit more in the back. What do we have next? Let's see. Let f be a function that has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers. And let p3, oh, pardon me. Oh, I should put a poll in here. How many of you yawned after I yawned? Um, and let p3 of x be a third degree Taylor for f about x equals 0. The Taylor series for f about x equals 0 converges at x equals 1. So that's a fancy way of saying it's centered at x equals 1. And the nth derivative is less than or equal to n over n plus 1 for n is 1 to 4 and all values of x. So this is where I'm going to build out that maximum value of the derivative. Of the following, which is the smallest value of k for which the Lagrange error bound guarantees that f of 1 minus p3 of 1 is less than or equal to k? What in the heck are they talking about? Okay, this is one of those times where sometimes the notation gets in the way of you really understanding things, and that's what I'm here to help you with. The good news is, they said you use Lagrange error bound. The tricky thing they did here is they wrote this weird thing. Well, if you think of that, that just means the function value at 1 minus the third degree Taylor polynomial at 1. So really, what it's getting at... Um, is that they are subtracting the function and the polynomial, which means they're finding the gap between them. Now, I'm making this last minute here, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I circled the wrong center here because I'm realizing it said it's the third degree Taylor about x equals zero. This is your center. My apologies. And then it says the Taylor series about x equals 0 converges at x equals 1. That's where we're trying to estimate it. So we're centered at 0 and we're estimating at 1. So I'm going back and changing my tune a little bit. Sometimes I like leaving these in the videos because I make mistakes too when I'm reading these. And I just fix it as I go. Okay. So anyways, center at 0, estimating at 1. Let's do Lagrange error bound. Fine. If I want the error using a third degree Taylor, it's going to be less than or equal to the maximum value of the fourth derivative over 4 factorial x minus my center to the fourth. Now, if I want the maximum value of the fourth derivative, that means I'm going to put 4 into this equation. So that fourth derivative maxes out at 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4 factorial, 1 minus 0 to the fourth. So that's really 4 over 5 times 4 factorial. And that's this. Okay. They did this whole funky thing, like naming the error as k. We didn't need to do that. 
It's just saying find the error between F and P, find the maximum value of the error uh, between F and P when you only use three powers. All right, and last but not least, it says show that the Maclaurin polynomial for sine of X converges to sine X for all X values. Okay, now this is not something that you would ask, be asked to do on the AP exam, but it's a nice application of what we're talking about. So just roll with me for a moment. Eh, what haven't I used yet? I want to use orange. All right, so we said that the Maclaurin polynomial for sine x, sine is an odd function, so I'm only going to use the odd powers of x. So it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, plus negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And now I'm going to check my negative 1 to see if I have it to the right thing. Let's see. 7 should be negative. I get to 7 when n equals 3. And when n equals 3, that would be negative. Yeah, I'm good. I'm supposed to show that sine of x converges to sine x for all x values, which means what I really want to show is that my error is going to head to 0. So what I really want to show is that my error for using an infinite number of terms is going to be 0. All right. Well, my error when using n terms is going to be less than or equal to the maximum value of the n plus 1th derivative divided by uh, n plus 1 factorial x minus c to the n plus 1. Okay, let's talk about the maximum value of the n plus 1th derivative. If my function is sine x, then my derivative is going to be cosine x. And then my derivative after that is going to be negative sine x. And then my derivative after that is going to be negative cosine x. And then it repeats. My derivatives would be the highest value that sine and cosine could ever reach. Well, the highest value that sine and cosine could ever reach is going to be 1. So this numerator, no matter what derivative I stop at, is going to be a 1. And then I have n plus 1 factorial here. And then I have x minus 0 to the n plus 1. But the thing is, I want to let this go out as far as it possibly can. So as n goes to infinity, I end up with... 1 over infinity factorial x minus 0 to the infinity. 1 over infinity factorial is smaller than you can possibly think of. You think exponentials grow fast? Factorials grow even faster. So 1 over infinity factorial, that's heading to 0. So our error is going to go to 0 no matter what x value we choose. Okay, so I am done now. If everything that I just did in orange did not make a whole lot of sense, I got to be honest, that's okay. You're watching a video and sometimes you have to let some things go. What I need you to make sure you understand though is this whole idea that the error of a Taylor series is based on the first omitted term. So if you end after x to the fifth, you check out the x to the sixth term and you maximize that numerator. So I'm going to stop talking now, and yeah, I'm done. So have a good day, everyone, and we'll talk soon.